Hey everybody, in our next installment of debugging lessons, we're going to talk about how to read a stack trace. So this is probably going to happen to you, it probably has already happened to you, but you know, you're going along, mind your own business, making great progress on the MP, in this case I'm still working on MP0, and you know, you, you run the code one day and then suddenly, out of nowhere, nothing works, right? Or one of the test cases starts to fail. Um, one of the things I want to point out is that, while well, I'm vamping here while Android Studio goes about its business, is that how things fail in Android Studio actually can tell you a lot about what the problem actually is. So when we look over here on the left in our testing menu and these tests are all going to fail, when they fail with an exception, which means that the app was actually going to crash, they're marked as red and there'll be a little X. When they fail with the testing error, that's different. That means that your app didn't behave in the way that the test suite's expected, but it still did something and it didn't crash. Now, crashy apps are not good. When I have an app on my phone that crashes, typically the first thing I do is uninstall, right? And so we do want to make sure our apps don't crash, but when they encounter a certain type of failure, sometimes that's the only thing you can do, right? And in this case, I've made a mistake in my code that is causing the app to crash, and you'll see that it's essentially crashing on all of these test cases. Now, Depending on, you know, some of these are a little bit different than others. This is a stack trace, right? Now, in this case, the, the, the trace that is being generated is not all that helpful. Um, but if I look down here, and, and sometimes this might happen, you might have to look around at different ones to see if you can find something that you can start to make sense of. Here's a good example of a stack trace that's useful. Um, okay, now there are two parts of this, right? So the first part says there was something called an exception initializer error. Um, and that happens here in the onCreate method. And it happens when I try to create the server object. Um, now, if you look down here, it says exception initializer error, okay. But then it says caused by, and this is more useful information. So essentially when I try to create a server object, it, it, it crashed. And part of the reason for that, let me open up my server uh, code here, is that this is a special type of uh, this is, we've talked about this a little bit already, this special type of um, uh, idea in Kotlin called an object class. And what it means is that there's only one of these. This is sometimes known as a singleton. Java has some patterns for doing this, but in Kotlin this is actually built right into the language, which is pretty neat. So there are some cases where in your application, you only ever want one instance of a class. Like that class stores information, but I'm never gonna create more than one. In Java, there are patterns for doing this, but in Kotlin we actually have direct support in the language for something uh, that's done this way. And by marking this as an object, what it means is that this inherits from dispatcher, but I can only ever have one of them in my application. That's kind of a nice feature. But what's happening here is when I try to, when, when Kotlin tries to create this one instance of server, it's failing. And the reason it's failing is down here. Now, this is, and if I, if I showed you more of this, uh, what you would see is that if, if you look, it says there's a null pointer exception, but it's a little strange because it says that the null pointer exception is in java.base, which is weird, right? Because this is code that's provided as part of the Java standard library. You'll see over here, these are grayed out. They're grayed out because this is code that's not part of my project. Now, you know, before you go off and file a bug report against java.util.objects, which I wouldn't su suggest you do, 99.999% of the time when this happens, the problem is our code, not the Java Standard Library. The Java Standard Library is being used by millions of people all over the world and is part of billions of, of apps. Billions of apps, maybe hundreds of thousands of apps, but apps that are used by billions of people. It probably doesn't have a lot of bugs left. Maybe a couple, but I suspect that's not what's happening here. Instead, usually what's happening is we're using it wrong. We did something wrong that caused this, this crash. And so, what the stack trace represents is the series of method calls that it took to get to the point where the app crashed. So this is almost like the series of steps that the app was taking and then it crashed. Typically stack traces are provided in reverse order, right? In this case, what I'm showing is the last thing that happened was that require non-null was called in objects.java and that require non-null apparently was past null which caused it to fail. And then there was some other code in the scanner class that was running before that but what's the last thing that my code did? That you see down here. And this is colored differently in Android Studio to indicate to me two things. First of all, that it's part of my project, but also it's clickable. So let's click on this line. And now 
You know, with the null pointer exception, there's usually two ways that this will happen. If we create a null pointer exception in our own code, you'll see that the top of the stack trace will be a line in our project. I'll show you an example of, the, of this next. And the you can usually then look at the code and figure out, oh, okay, this thing that I thought was not null turned out to be null. And Kotlin makes this hard because Kotlin has great support for working with null. And in a minute, when I show you how to do this, I'm gonna actually have to push past Kotlin's uh, features in this area that are usually very, very handy for working with null safely. But in this case, I still have a null pointer exception. And it's a little bit unclear what's going on here because it's like, what's null, right? I mean, I mean, maybe the scanner itself is null, but it's not this call to use delimiter that's actually failing. So, you know, just as a, a fun aside, scanner is like one of the worst pieces of Java. Like Java has some good parts, scanner is not one of them. So anyway, um, you know, aside, aside, aside uh, let's look at this line of code and, and try to figure out what's happening. Uh, and, and so, you know, when you get here, the next thing to do is to think a little bit and squint and try to understand, look for, look for mistakes, right? So where do I see a mistake here? I just, you know, I just fat fingered somehow is what we call it. Sometimes what we call it, I just fat fingered the name of the file. You know, it's restaurants.csv. I called it restaurants.csv. And even Android Studio is trying to be helpful here. It's like, oh, this is a typo. Um, okay, so I'll take that out and now things will work. Um, so this is how to use the information in the stack trace. Take a stack trace when it has this caused by area down here, that's usually what I want to look at. Find the line of code that's in my project, the first line of code. Now, if you want to, you can step through the other things. This is how we got here, right? So I was initializing this object and I called load restaurants and the load restaurants tried to initialize the scanner with a bogus file name. And that apparently caused the scanner to crash. Makes sense. Um, so that's how we got here, right? But frequently where the error occurs is by far the most useful piece of information in the stack trace. Right? The stack trace is this massive blob of stuff, but what we zero in on, right, is what's the line number? What's the last line that my code executed before it crashed? Because that's typically where the problem took place. All right, so let me show you an example where I actually have a null, and, and again, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to do this uh, carefully, let's see. I'll have this be a string, a nullable string. And then I'll say uh, println and test dot, test dot hash code. Now, you know, again, I can't do, you know, I, I shouldn't really be able to do this in Kotlin, can I? Uh, let's see here. Oh, huh? interesting, okay. Um, yeah, okay, it's here about that, that's okay. So let's try this, let's see what happens. Um, Okay, so I'm gonna hit run. And what I'm surprised by is that it's not requiring that I use the non-null uh, non operator here. Get a little bit a little bit surprised by it, but let's see what happens. And what I'm expecting is, to, is for this to crash, right? Because it's null and I'm dereferencing. Um, so, so let's see what actually what actually happens. Oh, okay, sorry. So yeah, okay, I forgot this. So in, in, in Kotlin, actually, null has, has, a, <laughs> has a hash code value. Uh, all right, let's do this. Uh, let's use the non-null assertion operator, make it, uh, make it do this. I guess that's smart, right? I guess it's smart for null to have a hash code. And I guess it would be zero, right? That makes a lot of sense. I never did that before, it's kind of cool. Uh, all right, so that's still broken. Let me just run this one. Well, let's run this guy. Uh, let's run this guy. All right, so I'm gonna run this. Hopefully now this will actually crash. Um, you know, going to all this trouble to get this code to crash for you, uh, because in Kotlin it's kind of hard, right? I learned something just a minute ago. I, I will I will say I did not know that null had a hash code value, but now I do. All right. So I'm hoping that this now uh, will work. Will it work? Nope. Sticking to speed time as it usually does. Okay, there we go. Right. So now you'll see I have another null pointer exception, but now, and it's the same thing, right? It was exception initializer error, that means I couldn't create the server class. Why not? It was caused by a null pointer exception. I'm down here on line 42, and now it's pointing exactly at the problem. Um, and then Colin, you kind of have to do a little bit of work to get these null pointer exceptions to happen. But there's plenty of other types of exceptions that you could create. You could have an array index out of bounds, you could have other things. But when you have this type of crash, the thing to do is use the stack trace 
to figure out what, what, what was the last thing your code did before it crashed. That will frequently, when you combine that with what happened, like a null pointer exception, or index out of bounds, list index out of bounds, whatever, those are two really useful pieces because you know where the problem is, what line number, and then you also know what the problem is, like what, what took place. And usually when you combine those two together, you can kind of squint at your code carefully and figure out what the problem is. When the stack trace leads into a library that you don't control, usually that means that you're doing something wrong, right? You're calling something wrong, you're passing bad arguments that the function isn't prepared for. In the case before, I was essentially calling you know, I was passing this bogus file to the scanner, which wasn't happy about that. So there's lots of different ways, you know, that you can use this information when the stack trace leads into a library before the crash took place. But the place you still want to focus your attention is the last thing that happened before the crash. Use that piece of information and nine times out of 10, you'll be able to figure out what's wrong. Let me also point out that this is a completely general skill. Using stack traces, C++ has stack traces, Go has stack traces, Python has stack traces, TypeScript has stack traces. Every programming environment you work with is going to generate this type of information. And they all work pretty much the same way. And they all provide pretty much the same pieces of information. And when you get good at using them to figure out what's going wrong, you end up being able to, to, to skate past your mistakes much more quickly.